Hello, uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, today and welcome to New Director, New Film and its 49th edition. My name is Florence Almosini. I'm a member of the selection committee for the festival and I'm very pleased to see or to imagine all of you uh, watching uh, Giraffe, uh, directed by Anna Sophie Hartman. Uh, and we're going to have a discussion uh, about the film with the director. So maybe Anna Sophie, you want to say hi? So and then I ask a few questions. Mm, well, hi, I'm um, so happy to, that Giraffe has been invited to new directors, new films, so it's, uh, it's a very great honor. I wish uh, we would all sit in the cinema right now, um, but I'm very hopeful that we will soon be able to. Um, and just wanna say thank you for sh watching the film and uh, I look forward to talking with you, Florence, and uh, talk about the film after 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 the film <laughs> thank you um i was going to start maybe with uh, some sort of an easy question so we can start the conversation uh, and dig into like different layers uh, later on but um uh it's you have a documentary setting to the film which starts uh, with the construction of the tunnel from the lowland islands uh, that goes through germany Mm -hmm. So um, I think actually the construction just started last month in, in reality, but it's been a project that has been discussed and talked about for a long time. Mm -hmm. So can you maybe uh, start with um, what attracted you to this idea of making a film around this? How were you aware or involved in the uh, construction? I, I mean, you're from Denmark, so it's probably something that has been heavily discussed in Denmark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you live in Germany, so that's the other side of the film. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, so I uh, I come from so Denmark is a is a bunch of islands, right? Um, and I come from the island Lolland, where this this tunnel will be built. Uh, and I've been hearing about it. I think since I was a kid, they've wanted to make a bridge, build something. Um, and when I started reading about this tunnel that they were supposed to come, they had these, uh, you know, they, you always have all these projections and, pro you know, and dreams. Um, I mean, also the people building it. And uh, what really struck me was that they're gonna, they were going to build a big city for workers next to this very small city where the ferry um, departs from. So the ferry city is like, there's 1200 people or something. It's just a small sort of, also like a fake city that hasn't, uh, hasn't existed for more than 60 years. Cause it used to be, it used to be ocean or it used to be the seabed. So they sort of, they sort of dried it up and built the city just so the ferry could sort of go. Um, and they were going to build this city for 3000 people uh, of workers. And when I was, you know, back then when I started thinking about it, it was like 2013, 2014, um, they were supposed to start working in 2018, which they obviously didn't because now we're in 20 and they just sort of started, they've started building like a big factory. But I just thought it was so, um, so, so that sort of sparked my interest to see like, oh, this is going to be a mammoth project. It's going to be so good or so, so big. And to sort of see this small island where I come from, which is very forgotten in, in Denmark. Or so, it's like socioeconomically quite a uh, challenge, one would could say. And it was interesting to me that this huge project, which is obviously a, um, a, a it's birthed from or it comes from, from, you know, transportation, like globalization basically, comes from having to transport goods from north of Sweden or from Sweden down to, to Hamburg or to Rotterdam. So you have this, uh, this big global force really like burrowing its way into this very small forgotten place. And I thought that was very interesting because I mean, it happens everywhere and and then take so take this sort of project and see what it does to its surroundings how it dis displaces people what people it attracts so it's sort of i started um so that was sort of that was the project wh where it started and i shot my first film on lawland and i met or i sort of encountered that um there was a lot of or still are there's a lot of um immigrant workers working in you know, they work on the pig farms or they work on the streets or they work um, in, in agriculture. And I was interested in making a por portrait of this, of this area and also making this portrait include these, these foreign workers who normally are not seen as part of 
that uh, a part of us, right? Um, so that was so I had sort of different entries into the into the project and different interests in, that I wanted to combine into and, and sort of make into a whole um, questions about belonging, questions about home, questions about uh, memories. Um, so it's sort of this sort of all con converged into this into this point of this sort of fairy city that could that could where I could talk a lot about it, a lot about a lot of things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, I mean, the film could be called Places and Memories, which is, I think the book Dara is reading. It's, I think it's called... <laughs> yeah. It's, it's yeah it's like you have a place and you have the memories and it's a very good representation of uh, the themes you explore in the film. Um, yeah, that's... Um, so the book she's reading, I'm just looking if I'm having... If I, because I usually, I have it and then I, I give it away to people. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> it's so good so they have to read it um so i don't think i actually have it here anymore um but it's rebecca solnit it's um who i started reading back in 2006 and 7 um and she talks a lot about how memories contain or how spaces contain a memory and how we can uh revisit our memories by revisiting places and how they sort of contain them and i thought that's a very that was a very interesting idea. And I used to work for an artist um, in Berlin who was also very much, uh, you know, he worked a lot about space and what spaces can do and uh, common spaces and how we share spaces and the experience of space. Um, and also just from a personal point of view that I have this, you know, to me spaces, they do contain memories. They do sort of, you walk down the street. I think everyone knows you walk down the street and you think about whatever happened there or you used to have a boyfriend somewhere or a girlfriend and you walk down the street and everything sort of comes up again. Um, and then sort of what, you know, what, uh, so I was interested in what a space and a house and a home, what that sort of can contain and what that means to, to different people. Cause it doesn't mean the same thing to everyone. Mm -hmm. No, and you explore this in the film. Um, you have a lot of duality in the film also, which goes with, you know, like the past and the future, obviously, and the construction, which goes with destruction. Mm -hmm. um, you have, but to me, you seem like a little bit more interested in developing the past, mostly because <laughs> you talk about the memories, because of uh, Dara's job as a, uh, in, in archiving and studying and keeping track for a really cool job working for a country museum I yeah mean, i mean i don't know if so anyone is doing this in real but that seems like a really interesting uh, um view <laughs> yeah uh, they, they are people are doing this in real life um it might be something in you but something you just care about but do you see a lot of dara in you or you or did you put a lot of yourself in dara so like, pictures uh, and it seems like analog because of the the sounds the pictures make um she does i mean okay so how do i start so this uh maybe i'll just start with the job so when i was the way i write the film is i'm like i maybe like i was saying in the beginning i was like oh there's this project oh there's these people were living here like the the immigrant workers or the polish workers and then when I was researching what's hap what happens around this around the tunnel, I found this job. So the job she's doing, someone has actually done, and it's uh, you know they've done it for the museum, and it's sort of uh, they have to do it when they do these big construction works. They have to sort of make sure that they they take care of what's in the ground. So there's also been a lot of ar ar archaeologists that have been they've been combing the ground where this whole thing is going to be too to secure the national treasures before they're going to be um, destroyed, which I also find incredibly fascinating that they have, that, you know, that we can, in sort of all these layers, we can, we can, we can try and see that all these people have lived there before. So there's, so, you know, there's destruction, but there's still traces. And what does the traces say about the people who's lived there? So there's this, I loved, you know, also traces. And so when I found this job description, I thought like, that's my main character because I also love this idea. Okay, you go into somewhere in, in a room or a house and like who lived here? What life can you imagine? I mean, so it also has a lot to do with imagination and finding the house in the film. So she finds this, 
the house of the of Agnes, and and I wanted to have a mirroring effect of saying, okay, she, you know, she, this there she's sort of rootless and she's sort of floating around in this this weird transit space and finding the past or finding this past or this woman from the past is sort of not grounding her, but maybe maybe giving one um, one what's it called one way of uh, one direction or sort of giving her some sense of, of possibility or an idea of how a life could be. So it's very also much like what, you know, what kind of life do you want to live in this? Um, and that both Dara and, uh, and Lutzek, the young Polish guy, they're both modern European people living in sort of living in this European Union where we can, tr where we can travel around and we can live everywhere, we can work everywhere. But what happens when we sort of lose the connection to to where we come from or where we don't when we don't put down roots but what happens to our connection or to our relationships um and so this the 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 thing with the past is very much also i mean i i i apart from you know being interested in history and stuff but sort of it's more about how how the past becomes present in the moment that we you know that we that we remember it um and it's it's a little bit what I like, you know. Also with the same with archaeology, it's sort of it's you can have past and present uh, exist at the same time. And I like this sort of um, I don't know. I mean, what I tried in the film is to have many layers, you know, sort of uh, happen at the same time. Like sort of a someone saying so like it's like vertical storytelling. Like there's all these things happening at the same time. So it's a little bit like. Uh, also like a dick or something. <laughs> yes. But you also, you also um, explore, uh, you just touch it on it lightly, um, immigration or like modern immigration. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but they're both very different, even so they're both like are floating like this, but for Dara, it's definitely short on immigration. She travels back and forth. Uh, mm -hmm. She's there, but you know, she lives in Germany and she mm -hmm. has, um, uh, it seems like um, a richer uh, life, and um, uh, definitely more privileged. Privileged, yeah, I think it's a better word. Yeah. Uh, and then for uh, Lucek, it's more. It's not really a chosen immigration; it's a lack of choice. But it also doesn't um, wallow in misery. It's not like something that's like really seem as something negative uh even so there's difficulty in then you know that would come from from moving family and and not being able to travel uh as one wanted but it was interesting also like to expose these two sides of immigration but usually it's always something negative uh mm. in european countries when we talk about immigration it's it's difficult, it's brutal, it's sad, it's dark. Right. Um, well, I just, you know, I'm trying in, in the film, or I, I'm hoping in, in, the, in the films I'll make to be, to be sort of, to keep the complexity of these, of these mm -hmm. um, themes or these, uh, you know, when you look at something, it's always complex, you know, it's always, um, and immigration is, is it's very complex. I mean, I, I can't, because you're describing it very, very well, like Dara is a privileged immigrant. She is definitely, and for, I mean, I would think she's chosen to be where she is. She is um, traveling around to different jobs because that's what her, um, in my, I mean, we don't really tell it explicitly in the movie, but in my imagination, she gets, uh, and I know it from people around, you know, you get an assignment, then you're there for three months. And I know it from the you know, I was talking to the, so in my research and writing the film, it's very common, you know, they get the archaeologists, they're very sort of freelance, they, they get a job for six months, then they move somewhere else, get, you know, they're very also moving around, but in a, obviously they're, uh, they're choosing this and, and the Polish guys are choosing to work in Denmark because the pay is so much better and then they can build their houses at home, but the cost is to leave their families behind, right? So it's, um, I guess there's just different, different costs to different kinds of, and I mean, human costs, right? The, the cost of, of immigration. 
and I don't think I I I don't know if um I don't want to judge it. I don't want to judge. Uh, I don't want to say, oh, she's privileged and it's and it's terrible, and they're and they're like romantic and you know hardworking workers. Um, but there's definitely a difference, and there's a difference between East and West Europe. There still is, and I mean, um, and I guess I'm just trying to look at what does that mean instead of portraying it as particularly bad or dramatic or but it's sort of saying, okay, they are, and, and I mean, in the film also this thing that happens to them, that happened to them in real life. So the guys playing the Polish, you know, the Polish workers, they are working there, they've most of them lived there for 10 years. Um, and when they arrived in the beginning, uh, cause you know, most of it is based on, on talking to all these people and, and this thing happened, they were cheated out of their money, uh, which they then got back because the union guys helped them. So, you know, it, it uh, in real life, the story ended well, but just to be sort of, there's so many, I mean, you're from France. I don't know. There's so many prejudices about Eastern workers. And I think it's just time to, um, you know, say they are, they are part of whatever us, they're part of, we're, we can't, we're interconnected. We can't, I'm not, I'm not putting it very well, but I have this feeling also when I grew up, you know, there's, there's a lot of prejudices. There's a lot of sort of them and us. And, and, and I mean, but you said you express it very well in the film um, because it's a story that is very light but the, the you know but all the scene that you explore and also the tone of the film mm. i find extremely um soft and kind and soothing because mm -hmm. the basis of the film has a lot of drama but mm -hmm. the tone of the film is actually uh kindness and i would say hope in a way because even when things are not going perfectly well and we don't know where their love story could go, obviously, you know, it seems like it's not really uh, something that could really last for a long time for so many different reasons, but it doesn't really matter. It's just, I really enjoy and appreciated this in the film. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, and I think it was a nice contrast with a lot of things you're showing mm -hmm. and puts everything in perspective. And I wanted to say that you really did this very well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so maybe you could talk a little bit more about like how you achieve the balance, like uh, what were you hoping to uh, do with like putting this tone of, you know, hope or kindness or softness in the film, depicting what you're showing? Um, well, to pick up on what you say, the hope, I guess I was, um, I, I have having this feeling, you know, like, uh, it's, it's maybe going to sound a little bit harsh, but this, you know, everything's going to disappear at some point, you know, the house you lived, the house, these people live, they're going to disappear. Um, so what, so what really matters if everything disappears, if everything becomes a spoon in the ground or, um, what really matters is the relationships that we f we form with other people. It's the people that we meet, mm -hmm. and it may it may be very brief. Um, it may be a love affair that goes on for two or three months, or it may be someone you meet on a ferry, or it may be um, you know it may be someone you I don't know whose story you imagine. And I think this idea that everyone sort of um, also, everyone has a story. Everyone has, um, you know, I, I, that's why also Kate is in there. There's these, these connections or these, um, what's that called? When you, these meetings of people and, and being really aware and, and it's going to sound cheesy, but like very grateful for the people you meet. And I think that's sort of, so that all this is happening and all this change is happening and you have all these sort of forces of, you know, from the big world coming in and changing. So it's really about, uh, yeah, about the relationships and the people that you, the relationships you form and the people you meet and and the nature of things is that things change and the nature is that things will cease and, and transform. So it's like enjoying it when it's, uh, while it's there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's true. <laughs> uh, could you talk a little bit about the, the actors and the, the, the casting? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Dara, I've seen in other films. I think she's, she's kind of well known in, in, in Denmark. She was, she's I don't know, in major. Yeah, so she's, she's Norwegian. Norwegian, right? She's Norwegian. Yeah. yeah. So she's Norwegian, um, and she's been doing stuff in Norway, and I, I, I think a lot of stuff internationally. Um, and I like this fact that I mean, if you don't, if you don't really understand Danish and Norwegian, which very few people do, you might not catch that she's Norwegian because we, do, you know, I will speak to a Norwegian and and they'll speak back in Norwegian, and I'll speak Danish, and we'll understand each other. But it sort of made this one removed, like she was one removed foreign again like i wanted i wanted to emphasize the foreignness of of everyone uh and this mix of the foreign and and the other and like you know the same with the giraffe in the beginning it's sort of this this giraffe in um in a in a what's it called fichtenwald in a like an evergreen it's not on the savannah right so it doesn't really belong there but but then again maybe it does belong there but it's you know this it's this, it's it's doesn't belong in where's home but maybe home is now in this little in this little nordic country um although it's a giraffe and um so the casting of dara i mean dara and uh, lutzek the guy who plays lutzek is jakob giersha he's also an actor he's a very well-known actor in poland uh, and then there's always obviously maran eckert who plays kete uh, who's well known from Shanelek's film and from, I mean, she's a big theater star also uh, here in Berlin, or in the um, Deutsche Theater here in Berlin. And, uh, and all of the rest are, um, are, you know, non-professional actors who are from there. Um, and the cat, so the casting of the actors was very sort of normal and with a casting director and, you know, we we're casting. Um, and with the other guys, uh, it was me and at one point also an assistant who could speak Polish, a Danish-Polish girl, uh, also film director now. And uh, I think I, we put up some like trying to look for people who are interested and then also just sort of meeting people over like someone who knew someone who knew someone. So, mm -hmm. for example, the, the farmer uh, with the stones, he was like someone who, you know, we were, I was trying to find like a big, a big like farmer and then one, another farmer was like, oh, I know the right person and called him up. And it's sort of, it's very much sort of calling, calling. Um, and, uh, and the Polish guys, I'd read about them in a, in an article. Um, and then I, I called the journalist and she, you know, so it's sort of, uh, and then I ended up meeting, you know, we ended up meeting and it was just sort of meeting everyone when they're sort of, meeting them a lot of times, getting to know each other um, with every one of them, everyone who's sort of in, in, the, in the movie. And especially with the Polish guys, they're very, um, they're so friendly and so warm. And it's, um, it's, it was very funny to sort of drive around this island where I, where I come from and then ending up in this house where all these Polish guys and there's, you know, they some, uh, Mario's the guy who's with the big belly. He's, he understands a lot of Danish, but he doesn't speak it. And, and so we could sort of talk and, you know, there would always be vodka or chocolate or, or meat from their home. Like they were so sort of um, very, very sort of friend, like uh, friendly. Welcoming. And, huh? Very welcoming. Very welcoming. That's the word. Yeah. Very, very welcoming. I mean, everyone was, but you know, when you go to the Danes, you get coffee and cake and you sit and you get coffee, you know, it's very, it's very, you get a lot of coffee uh, for sure. And, I'm going to eat the Polish. I prefer the vodka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Well, um, but and with the, I mean, you know, everyone was very, very um, generous with their time and with their stories, and and it just really become. I tried to make very clear what I was wanted from them and what the film wanted, uh, and this about meeting them at eye level and. Um, and then we, you know, practicing, I knew what the scene, you know, we were talking and then we would meet again and say, okay, we'll take this thing from the conversation last time. Can you, can you repeat this and this and this? So sort of taking their stories together in small bits, like legal blocks and saying, okay, now this and this and this and this. And then sort of until we actually started shooting, we would have sort of the story they would tell um, fixed, you know, never written down, but just sort of 
knowing what what is gonna what we're gonna talk about. So did you? But I mean, uh, you knew what they, you wanted them to say, or you interacted with their own story. It's inter So it's an interaction with their own story. So the couple in the beginning, I knew that. Um, I knew I'm maybe going to ruin this, but they didn't have to move their house because of the ferry or because of the tunnel. Um, oh. But they did have to move. They did have to leave their house. And I knew that because I'd met the um, life, the guy before and, and, and they had to give up their farm and it was very hard on Bierde on, on his wife. So I knew that they was in there and I knew that that could give something that could be something interesting. They could talk about, you know, and also just they're very warm and very talkative and very, you know, she had a great sort of way of, of talking about things. Um, so what we would do, you know, we'd have like an hour conversation, also just having coffee and talking. And the next time we'd meet, I would say, you know, this thing you talked about last time, can you talk more about this? And then we would, as sort of, as, as working with an actor saying, okay, like we talk about this and we talk about this and we talk about this. Mm -hmm. So it, it, was, it wasn't sort of improvised, like they were really, working as um as as actors in that sense but with their own words you know mm -hmm. um and that worked very well really um, I it, it seems like it was uh difficult because or maybe long or did you have to edit a lot no or we so, got to... so all that work happened before the shoot before ever, before we started shooting so it's mm -hmm. all in preparation Right, so like all these visits happened before we even started shooting. So when we actually had to shoot, because you know money is tight and you have the days you have, everyone when we came to set knew what what we're gonna do that day. Like the the the, the non professionals, they also knew we're gonna sit in the kitchen. We're gonna, uh, you know, and they've also met uh, they met Lisa before. I made sure that everyone Lisa had a scene with. We had like a rehearsal before, so it was very much so. I think the main, the main, the main goal was really also that everyone was very comfortable, right, and not not nervous. So also with life in theater, with the with the Polish guys, first it was just me, then it was me and an assistant, then it was me and assistant and the camera woman with the camera. Then we had like a small camera and we would record the scene, you know. Then we would record the scene again. Then another assistant, another people would come. So it sort of we would sort of build it up. So that when we're actually doing the scene and 30 people around, they knew, you know, two handfuls of everyone already. So it felt very familiar. No one was sort of nervous. Hope, I mean, they were probably nervous, but no, you know, everyone sort of knew each other. So it just feels like we're just meeting and, and we're doing this thing that we did again. You know, we did it last week. Now it's just the camera is bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure we would be nervous, but I think in that way it doesn't show at all in the film. And that's also why I was wondering how much was mm -hmm. asked of them and how much of our stories was there. And if you had to edit a lot, because it's not easy to get uh, non-professional to talk like this for a long period yeah. of time and to be truthful also. Um, so it was... I mean, it's also the... I, I mean, it was also sort of different from every... Uh, you know, from every, I mean, depending on the scene, it, you know, we work differently because so it's, it's very different to have a scene in the beginning where life and beard are really talking and they're, you know, they're close ups and they're talking and telling these stories. We definitely had three angles so we could cut between it. But um, then there are scenes with the Polish guys and, and Lutzek, he's, and I mean, Jakob, he did a great job uh, in like integrating into the group. Um, he went down like also a few months before he started shooting and he went and worked with them, you know, like he went and actually yeah. was digging. <laughs> and so, cause, and I think the guys, cause they sort of knew who was a famous actor, but it was like, it was most of their wives who knew that he was a famous actor. Well, I'm, I, I know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but just sort of, he, he did an enormously, uh, you know, a great job um, getting to know the guys and, and I think he even liked them so much that, you know, when he was having uh, free time during the shooting, he actually got, he went and worked with them oh just to, uh, to hang out. And I mean, Marius, who is, who is um, the guy with the big, you know, the leader of the group, he was just such a natural, I mean, he was such an entertainer, you know, um, so just very lucky to, to meet these, um, 
to meet them and that and they were so generous you know and i also i would also say i remember right at one point they were also which you know very different and could, to come back to the whole immigration story the polish guys were at one point very very um careful how i wanted to portray, portray them right they were you know boarding to suspicious like what kind of story is this how are we going to be shown because they did not want to be the typical uh the polish guys that's stealing the jobs from everyone else or you know so they um they had a different um we you know i made sure that they knew how i was going to do it and 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 what my perspective was Mm -hmm. yeah. which was different you know it was, just, it was just like a detail that's that i think uh you know i could completely understand that they they have this um hesitation mm -hmm. obviously but it was yeah, it also works with the tone of the film because then it's just very gentle and and it's not sentimental at all and what i meant it was it's like positive you know mm -hmm. um yeah, and I also wanted to ask you a little bit about the cinematography and your collaboration with your DP, mm -hmm. Jenny Lu. It's, uh, it's like it's like that's like really like uh, beautiful composition, beautiful uh, like photography, and you know like short videos and the way like you you portray the, the nature also. Mm. So I wanted to hear a little bit more about about that. Um, so Jenny Lu Siegel. Uh, the cinema or the DP, we've known each other for a very long time. We went to the same school, went to the same the German Film and Television Academy. Um, this is the first film we make together. And the way I also work and prepare my films are, and write the films is I go with a camera and I photograph the spaces and people. And, you know, I sort of try and figure out what kind of atmospheres will this space give off? Like what what kind of what is the space sort of um, naturally giving back when you take a picture of it? Um, so I'd done a lot of that. And then when Jenny Lou, she came uh, along and we started working, we, I had a lot of locations already, I, you know, fixed or sort of, I had a lot of locations already uh, or written for these locations. And then we went both, you know, with cameras and we visit them together. And then we had the scenes and we would, you know, just go over, go back and back to the locations to find the right images, to find out what images can we get from these spaces and what are they, what, what atmosphere and, and also just, you know, the blocking and stuff. We were, um, so we prepared a lot before the actual shoot. Um, and we just have very similar taste in, in, uh, in, in images or in, in, you know, in, I work a lot with, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm very, to me, the sort of the images and cinematography is so integral to the way I tell, to my filmmaking. Um, and it's so sort of at the basis of, of where the, my films, they start. And, and it, was, um, it was such a great work with her because we're so in tune, um, to how and where, and also, you know, then we could make changes on set or just sort of uh, to together find the best way to, you know, in this space, also how, how are people gonna move? You know, the, I, I, I try to, um, to also tell, I mean, and also, again, it depends on the scene, but sort of try to tell like, there's, especially in the, in the hotel rooms where, you know, who, what space and what space or how's the body in this image, how, is this body and this uh, part of the image and, and how does that sort of, what does the image and the space around it also tell, not just sort of, I mean, how can I say this in a more clear way? Um, you know, some films are interested in, the images that are there to carry the, the face or to carry the actor and to carry and show just the, you know, sh sort of focus on mm -hmm. the the, the emoting or the feeling body and to me the image you know the body is there the images are there to sort of have the body be in a part of of a space and see and let the space also talk yeah. <laughs> no it's a it's a more of an oblique approach uh in what you're showing and in the delivery of the image and the delivery of the story also 
it's it's, not, you know, it also has to do with me being, I like when a film will give me space to, to, to discover things. I like when a film is not sort of shoving it down my throat, you know, and I feel, and obviously the way an image will, the way I'm giving you an image is also either I can stuff it down your throat or I can sort of give you space to, to <laughs> see things for yourself, to discover things for yourself, to feel things for yourself. So to me, it's also a lot about giving you, giving space to, to, for the viewer to feel things and to discover things and, and be more, maybe that's what, uh, what, you, what you're talking about when you say like the gentle, like to also sort of be generous in the way the story is and not sort of not being so forceful in the storytelling, yeah. in the images. Yeah. I mean, in French, it's uh, in douceur. Yeah, douceur. In douceur. That comes from the, from the film. But also it comes with the delivery and how the way uh, any sort of action is brought to the direct, to the viewer. Like you can take whatever information you want to build up more, you know, with the character, like people traveling on the ferry, their, uh, her relationship with her boyfriend or new relationship. And it's just, it's not a block of information. It's like little pieces. And then you build up as much as you want when you're watching the film. And that's why it's also so satisfying. Do you also think that the film is dense? Dense? Uh-huh. Okay. Dense. Uh, I think there's a lot in the film, but the delivery of it doesn't make it dense. Uh-huh, okay. Oh, I've been, I mean, sometimes I remember also thinking, wow, there's so much, like we're trying, trying to get so much in the film at the same time. I mean, the tempo is very slow and you have time to, but there's sort of, um, I, I, I feel like there's a lot of, uh, I'm trying to do, to tell a lot, of, a lot of things at the same time. So that's sort of, because um, I guess what I'm also, if, if we talk about the images, you know, they're all very precise or I'm trying to make them very precise. So it's very much about also, you know, you're, I'm showing fragments of things or fragments of scenes. Um, So you you get you get you get just enough, but not too much and not too little. Hopefully, yeah, I think so. I think there's not too much, not too little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, maybe you want to say a little bit more about the giraffe. When did you shoot the giraffe? Uh, the giraffe. The giraffe. We shot it. It was a pre-shoot. Um, okay. We knew it was going to take a long time. <laughs> It's not in, so giraffe is not in Lowland. It is. That's why it's in there. The giraffe okay. in Lowland. So on the north part of the island, there's like a safari park. Now they even have elephants. Um, if I, there had been elephants at the time, I might have done an elephant because everyone knows elephants remember everything. Um, but uh, they have giraffes and I just, I thought it was, it's uh, such a weird thing to have, you know, Safari, safari and they also have um rhinoceroses and stuff it's just such a weird thing and it's such an sort of also dated thing uh, and such a european thing to take these exotic animals and like you know appropriate them and bring them home and so we can watch them um obviously all that is not in the film but i just i thought this giraffe because it's also part of the island and i wanted to make a portrait of this island uh and this giraffe to me is sort of like it's like ringing a bell and saying, oh, there's something, there's something off and there's something like this thing doesn't really belong. And maybe when you've seen the film, you can say, oh, right. Okay. Maybe it's about home, home, you know, uh, where do I come from? Where do I belong? Um, and also just, it's a very fascinating, very curious animal. Um, so to me, there's also a little bit, uh, a little bit of Dara is also in this, like the curious animals that are looking at you. And I think what I also, I mean, and I remember writing the script, it, I had it that it looks in the camera. So luckily the giraffe looked in the camera. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, naturally. <laughs> naturally. Um, and, and cause they're super, super curious animals. Um, so I wanted to go, you know, this thing that it goes from being observed and being looked at, but then suddenly, actually looking back at us and and meeting us with its own gaze i think that to me also sets a tone 
um, of how we're meeting everyone else in the movie. Where look, you know, they're being observed, but they're you know they're not being looked down on or any or or sort of there's there's a connection. And we're looking at the we're looking people in the eye. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody wanted to know more about the giraffe. <laughs> It, it's yeah. maybe better than a rhinoceros, you know. Rhino as a title was not as nice as giraffe. No, no, and I think the giraffe is a very. The rhinos aren't very curious. They just want to eat. They're oh, eating. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, but the, the giraffes are pretty. They're like also they're a little bit like birds. Like I mean, that's what I know now. I didn't know that before. I just knew that they were giraffes, and they're so elegant, right? They're so elegant, graceful animals. Um, and they move a little bit like birds, so they have like one um, one leader of the herd. The leader of the herd is a, the biggest female, and so when she moves, everyone else moves after. So they're very sort of flock animal and very jittery and very sort of. Um, anyways, so all the things you've learned from the lowland safari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was learned a lot about farming. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, so I in the field. <laughs> yeah, and I learned about like why, how you shoot, uh, how you shoot uh, internet cables through the ground, which I also, you know, that's one of the beautiful things of going out into the world and meeting people is um, when I found out that the guys, because that's what they do, their job is is to put down fiber cables so that you know we can all get fast internet. And how brilliant is this when you know? There's a film or I'm trying to talk about connections and modernity is also coming. And these guys are, these guys are like digging the ground and it's so sort of basic and it's so um, the opposite of digital, right? It's the opposite of all this computer stuff, but it actually has to be put in the ground, right? It doesn't, it just doesn't, it doesn't just sort of here magically appear, right? Like we can talk because somewhere someone has shot cables through the ground. So I think that's uh, good to remember. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a great note to end the movie, uh, the discussion on, sorry. Yeah. And, the movie. and uh, thank you so much for spending so much time in discussing the well, film. Thank you very awesome. much for your great questions, Florence. It was uh, really nice talking to you. Yeah, no, thank you so much. And I think we're done. So thank you everyone for watching. And uh, yes, thank you everyone we'll watch even more film from you, direct on your film. <laughs> I hope so too. I can't wait to watch some films from it. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs>